But let's take it up with my guests this week. Washington Examiner investigative reporter Sarah Westwood and Washington Times opinion editor Charles Hurt. Thank you both for being here. Merry Christmas to you both. Later in the show, we're going to look in Merry detail. Christmas. We're going to look in detail at the state of the economy, politics, and culture in 2022. But let's start. I asked you to give us your three biggest takeaways from this year, and you sent them in advance. You both, both of you, picked as one of your top three the Dobbs abortion decision. Let me, Sarah Westwood. Let me start with you. Why was it so important? Yeah, I think the implications of the Dobbs decision are just going to go well beyond the 2022 elections. As you mentioned, it did play a role in Republicans not performing as well as expected. But what you really saw with the Dobbs decision was sort of reversing the political dynamic that had governed the politics of abortion for years. Because Democrats were the ones who were always articulating where the line should be, where abortion restrictions, if, if they supported any, should be within the Roe v. Wade framework. And Republicans really only ever had to point to Roe v. Wade and say, this is what we oppose. But they weren't really under pressure to come up with their own uh, abortion uh, laws or policies because they were hemmed in by Roe v. Wade. Now that that's gone, Democrats are not being forced to talk about the fact that many of them support abortion up to the final month of pregnancy, which is not supported uh, publicly by the vast majority of Americans. And the onus is now on Republicans to lay out restrictions, and they're Ch having to do a lot of discussions Ch about what those proposals look like. They haven't done that in years. Let me bring in Charlie Hurt. Charlie, you agree that uh, Dobbs was one of the biggest stories of the year. What do the Republicans need to do to stop uh, this issue being a really a potentially significant political negative for them? Well, I think Sarah uh, put her finger right on it. Uh, you know, one of the most important things is uh, talking about the fact that so many of the uh, Democrats who uh, like to uh, make a political issue out of this do support abortion up until the point of birth, which is far, far out of the mainstream of, of n normal Americans. But, uh, you know, I think it's interesting, you know, judicially speaking, uh, the Dobbs decision overturned one of the most one of the most extraordinary overreaches by the Supreme Court going back 50 years. Uh, politically speaking, obviously, I, I agree with Sarah that uh, Republicans probably underperformed in part because of this. But if you were to tell me at any point during the past 50 years that the first election after Roe v. Wade was overturned, Republicans would go on to win the House, nobody would have believed you. Right. And I do think that while it will continue yeah. to be a, an issue, I think that uh, the biggest, uh, the, the, the election where it's been the biggest the, issue is behind us now. Let's move on quickly. Charlie, you also mentioned uh, Ron DeSantis, as I did. I agree with you. That was one of the biggest stories. You also meant you talk about the border, yeah. the importance of the border. Just tell us, and of course, that, that's a crisis that's only getting worse at the border. Tell us uh, the significance of that. And again, what, you, what, what implications do you think that may have going forward? Well, I think the most significant thing about it is the fact that, you know, it is a competence issue. And obviously, Ron DeSantis is one of those people that ran on this. Um, it's a competence issue. Donald Trump very much fixed the immediate problem of the border. Uh, it, uh, when, when, Do when Joe Biden came in, he decided to undo all of those fixes that had solved the immediate problem. And so... On a, on a political level, it's about competent, uh, incompetence and competence, but it's also about the larger issue, about this, this long desire by Democrats to, to uh, disrespect law and order and to change the country in some way by simply not having borders. And that is far outside of the mainstream. Just like ninth month abortion, that's far outside of the mainstream of normal Americans. Agreed. Sarah, very quickly, you, your other two top stories of the year, you think, were crime. We know about that. We talked a lot about that and how big a problem that is. But you also mentioned free speech. Tell us just briefly, if you would, you know, what, what, what you think, where, we, where the country moved this year on the question of free speech. I think you are seeing sort of a re-examination of cancel culture, which is something that liberals defended as necessary as recently as just a few years ago. You've seen corporations less tolerant of young, woke activists dictating what their policy should be. Netflix, for example, telling its employees that if they don't like what Netflix produces, they can find somewhere else to work. Twitter, you know, being taken over and expanding its free speech policies. I do think you're seeing less of a tolerance for the, the speech police, the political correctness, and the backlash that, you know, could conservatives knew would be coming is, is starting to arrive to that leftist cultural, you know, enforcement regime.